Alrighty guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope you guys are doing well today. Hope y'all are having a good week. I'm praying for you. I've got your prayer request uh, on my notes in my phone, on my tablet, and I go back and I read over those and I pray for you guys each day. Uh, it's really cold in North Mississippi right now. I think it was 24 when I got in my car this morning. So I hope you bundle up if you're around my area of the world. I know that we've got some people watching in India. I want to say hi to you guys people all over the country. It's pretty cool that y'all joined me this early in the morning and for my uh, Indian friend, um, it's night there and he's had a, hopefully had a great day in the ministry. Okay, I know some of you who watch are not necessarily Christ followers and that's okay. Uh, matter of fact, it's awesome. Uh, probably if I had your story and your experience and your life, you know, I too may have not chosen to follow Jesus Christ yet. I just want you to consider him. He's a pretty amazing, amazing, amazing friend, and he is God, we believe. We're going into another name of Jehovah today. Remember, Jehovah is God. Uh, Yahweh is the better pronunciation. Jehovah is more common, more familiar. That's why I use it. Uh, Yahweh is the God that was introduced to um, Adam and Eve in the garden, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And we've talked about Jehovah Elohim. We've talked about Jehovah Jireh. And today we're going to talk about Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Elohim being God, the all-powerful one. And these are not multiple gods. This is a singular God. And it just talks about characteristics of God. We talked about Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. Today we're going to talk about Jehovah Nisi. And it's a pretty interesting story. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 17, we find the children of Israel, you know, Charlton Heston has just delivered them from Egypt. I'm just kidding. That's the Ten Commandments. Uh, but it's the same story. Um, Moses has come, or the prince of Egypt, you know, Moses has come. He's led the millions of people away from Egypt, and they're going through the desert, which should have been a short journey, turned to a really long journey uh, because of their sin. They kept... Uh, delaying uh, their their destiny um, and I don't want to get into that that's another whole story uh, but they get out in the middle of the desert and what's one of the things you need for survival you need water Moses gets these people out in the desert and we're not talking about a couple of hundred people a couple thousand we're probably talking a couple million people out in the desert and they have no water uh, and they're, they're, they're waiting on God to provide their most basic needs. You know how we talk about God as our provider. Uh, the most ba one of the most basic needs we have is the need of water. Did God not realize when he mapped this course out for uh, the children of Israel that they were going to need water? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like if God mapped this, this can't be God. I mean, God's not, he's taken me somewhere that there's no water. He's taken me somewhere where it's dry. He's taken me somewhere where it's weary. And that's exactly where these millions of people are. Can you imagine being the leader of a group this size uh, and they're calling you the deliverer and worshiping Jehovah again and they take you out there and you are kind of wondering what's fixing to happen? Where are we going to get this water? Do you remember where God supplied the water? God supplied the water from a place that uh, water doesn't come from. I'm going to just read the story for a little bit. Chapter 17, verse 1. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert uh, traveling place to place as the Lord commanded them. So God was leading them. He was directing them on this trip. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Imagine, don't just imagine a, a movie scene. Imagine a father and a mother with their children and their babies and, and, and a lack of water. But there was no water for the people to drink, so they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. That's legitimate, right? Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? In other words, it wasn't me that led you out here. God's directing us. Why do you put the Lord to the test? And the people wanted water. And God tells Moses to do something incredibly amazing. He says, Strike a rock, and water is going to come from a rock. Look, we're, we're not talking about a trickle. We're talking about water for masses and legions of people. So Moses strikes this rock, and, and you might see a water fountain. I see something akin to a geyser just flowing up in the middle of the desert. Uh, you may have sung the song. You may have read the verses. Uh, uh, he will lead me beside the still waters. I don't think this was still waters. You may have read the verses, sung the songs. 
uh, and rivers in the desert will I see. Well, that's what they're seeing here, and that's where we get that. And the Lord just pours out this water in their need. And then the very next thing that happens to them in this same spot, the Amalekites come and begin to attack them. The Amalekites were a strong rogue nation. They were uh, nomads. They moved from place to place fighting and conquering and stealing and plundering and taking and they attacked the Israelites. And remember, it was God who led them to this spot. If you ever got to a place where you felt like there, were no, there was no water? You got to a place where wave after wave, something just kept happening to you, and you thought, my goodness, God must not be for me. These were God's chosen people. Wave after wave of problem and, and, and things coming against them. And Moses said to Joshua, listen, the Amalekites are coming. Tomorrow I'm going to go stand up on the hill. And I'm going to raise my hands while you fight. And I'm going to read this to you. Um, it's 17, verse 10. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses has ordered. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the mountain. And as long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he would lower his hands, the Amalekites were winning. And when Moses grew tired, when Moses grew tired, they took a stone and propped him up put the stone under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur held up the arms of Moses, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. We're talking about from morning, from dusk till dawn, and from dawn to dusk, he's got his hands up, and Aaron and Hur are over there holding up his arms, and they remained steady until sunset. So Joshua came, overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. And here's where we find the only place in the Bible where Jehovah Nisi is mentioned. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write on this scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is my banner. We see so many interesting things in this story. Number one, that the place where God leads you, there may be giants in the land. There may be obstacles to overcome. There might be hopelessness to endure. There might be weeping for a night. There might be uh, army after army, wave after wave. Your basic, most basics of needs might look like they're going unmet and God provides for them in an unexplainable, um, unscientific way, he miraculously becomes Jehovah Jireh and provides for you. I want you to notice something about Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi is a war term. Jehovah Nisi is an army term. Jehovah Nisi, God my banner. If you remember and you think back to movies and such, and you can even think back, you can think as early as right now, um, we, we fight under banners. We fly under flags. You see the armies marching out on the horses carrying these poles with the flags on them. What they're saying is, as we march under the protection of, we march with the power of, we fight with the aid of. When Moses went to the top of the mountain, he took the same staff that he had struck the rock, the staff of God. He took the pole and he raised the banner of God. And he raised his arm up in the air. But as we know, though the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Mark chapter 14, uh, verse 38 says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sometimes we get tired of fighting, don't we? We get tired of keeping our hands up. And we need someone to come around side of us and help hold them up. But what was Moses saying as he was holding up that banner? He was saying that Jehovah Nisi is God that I fight under the Lord's banner, I fight with his aid, I fight in his name, I fight in his strength, and I conquer in the name of Jesus Christ. Fight under the name of God. Get under the protection of the sovereign king of kings. Moses held up the rod, but Aaron and Hur held up Moses. And this leads us to another interesting thought. It's about intercessors. You may have heard the term intercessor or intercessory prayer. And you think, what is that? That's going to battle on behalf of someone else. That's putting on the armor of God, going in, and it's not just prayer. Don't be confused. Uh, intercession is an activity. You can intercede through prayer. You can do the activity through prayer. But intercession itself is an activity. We have an English word that is very um, akin to intercessory, and it's intersection. And I just want you to notice something. 
Intercessory prayer or intercession is the act of bringing two parties together. It's the act of bringing two parties together. It's reaching out for someone who, whose flesh has failed, whose strength is failing, who needs their arms held up, and grabbing their arm, holding their arm, while reaching to heaven and grabbing God's hand and bringing the two parties together. Well, how does that look like an intersection? Well, our lives, our nature, our sin, and things like that is running completely parallel with God. They would never intersect. Some of the decisions we've made, some of the paths we've chosen, some of the words we've said, some of the things we've done is not intersecting with God. We are on our own path. And had Jesus not come, Jesus came and interceded. Jesus came touching heaven and touching earth and causing our paths to cross. Our paths would never cross with God had it not been for Jesus Christ. Here's my point. You have some friends, some family. You have some you. You have some you time that you need some people to gather around and pray for you. You need some people to reach heaven and reach out to you. Hold your arms up. Hold you up where you can be strengthened so you don't fail. Because, guys, we get tired. We can't do this by ourselves. Yesterday, I was being encouraged not to give up in a certain area of, 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 of our ministry in my life. And, and people were just talking to me. And I was just thinking, you know, I remember when I wasn't tired. And it just started to strengthen me again as they would intercede and as they would bring touching heaven, touching earth. Guys, you may have a family member that's lost or in need. So remember, it's not just someone holding up your arms. It's the act of you holding up someone else's arms. Let's go into battle for the people. Uh, one more story, and then I want to pray for you, is found as David uh, comes against the Philistine. Remember David and Goliath? David looks at this giant, this this champion of warriors. And David is this little person. He's saying, you know, I can't intercede on behalf of this great army of Israel. <laughs> well, you know, it's a funny thing what you can do when you reach heaven and touch earth. It's a funny thing what God can do with a rock when he pours forth the water of life in a desert. It's funny what God can do with a few small rocks in a small boy's slingshot pouch, isn't it? It's amazing what God can do with what you have and not what you don't have. He can provide for your needs from what you have. So David looks at this Philistine, Goliath. You come against me. You come against me. I imagine he probably hadn't even had his voice change yet. You come against me with the sword and the spear and the javelin. And I can just see Goliath. Or, ha, 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 ha. But I come against you. You come against me with the sword and the spear. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. I come under the banner of God. I fight with his aid. I'm here by his strength. I'm fighting in his name. I am coming to you in the name of the Lord Adonai Almighty, the powerful one, Jehovah Elohim. He will provide through Jehovah Jireh because I'm under the banner of Nisi and the armies of Israel. I'm bringing them and God together whom you've defiled. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I will strike you down. I will cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses to the Philistine army, to the birds of the air, to the wild animal, and to the whole world. They will know that there is a God in Israel. And all those who are gathered will know that it is not by the sword and the spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into your hand. I want you to listen to me closely today. I don't know what your battle is. I don't know what your desert is. I don't know what your basic needs are that are gone unmet. I don't know what you're tired of. I don't know who you're help holding up, and I don't know who's help holding up you. But you need to realize that the battle you're in today is not with flesh and blood. You can argue with your spouse. You can argue with your neighbor. You can fight with your family. You can disown your friends. But you have fought the wrong battle, and you will continue to fight that battle for the rest of your life until you intersect your plan with God's plan through intercession. You've got some family members that need to be saved. You've got some friends that need to be saved. You've got some family that needs some food. They need, some, they need lots of different things. They need their marriage restored. They need their health restored. They need a miracle. And all you're holding is a few rocks and you're standing out in the desert, thirst quenching you, about to die, faint, fall out from flesh and just absolute exhaustion. I'm telling you today, Pray out to Jehovah Nisi. Get under his banner. Put on the full armor of God and go head first with the giant that's been mocking you. Take them out.
Let me pray for you. Father, it's under your banner that I, I pray. It's under the name of Jesus that I speak this morning. God, I pray right now that whatever they're going through, that they have people around them. If they don't have people around them, that they seek out people around them that can help hold up their arms while they're in the battle. God, I pray that while they do that, that they are mutually involved with the lives around them as they help hold up their arms while their friends are fighting battles and going through things in their life where it just doesn't seem like there's any hope. God, today, give us a glimpse of Jehovah Nissi, God, our banner, and let's win one for the King. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please put your prayer request in there. Make sure you share it. There's a lot of folks out there that are sharing this thing, and man, it's spreading all over the place, literally to India and around the world. So let's, let's get this word, this good news of Jesus Christ out there, and tomorrow we'll probably launch into a little more Jehovah Nisi. I'll see you then. Have a great day today. This is the interlude. Oh, man. I probably better stick to my day job. Bye, guys.